morning, everybody. So uh, we have started receiving, uh, like you may have started receiving, notices of deficiency on the H-2B visas we filed this year. And I'm well aware, I, I remember, uh, I'm well aware of, of how scary this can be. And I remember the first time that um, I had to deal with this many years ago, how intimidating the notice of deficiency can seem. But I'm here to tell you that uh, if you break it down into pieces, it's actually much less intimidating and much smaller than it seems. And, and this is a combination of regulatory requirements that the notice of deficiency is required to have um, and the fact that some of the language uh, can, can be very intimidating. And it's designed to be intimidating. The H2B visa program, unfortunately, um, has a lot of people that don't want it to be around. There, there are a lot of uh, actors, a lot of lobby groups that don't like this program. And over the years, they have made it much harder than it needs to be, even though we know that the one thing that employers need are seasonal workers, right? If something that everybody on the political spectrum mostly can agree on, it's that there are not enough workers in the country and a temporary uh, work program could benefit everybody. Nevertheless, this is where we're at. Um, and I just as a side note, I, I get emails all the time saying or, you know, comments on these videos saying, why do employers who've gotten workers before have to go through this lottery again? It just it, it, it just makes everything so difficult. There's no predictability. It makes the program unusable for some. We need a program that can give us workers every year predictably? And the answer is starting about 2008, we lost what was called the returning worker provision in this program because we don't really have a functioning Congress. And that provision allowed back then employers who did get workers in one year of the lottery to get those same workers again outside of the lottery the following year. And without that, the program really doesn't function as intended. So what I would tell you, if that's something that you you are really passionate about, number one, try to join the Seasonal, uh, Se Seasonal Labor Alliance, Sea Labor, um, Seasonal Employer Alliance, I'm sorry, Sea uh, Labor, SeaLabor.org, you can uh, check them out. Uh, but number two, really lobby your Congress people, um, uh, both at the House and at the Senate level, to get that re-upped, re, uh, re that provision of um, the H-2B visa program. Because yeah, it does make a big difference. It is super frustrating. There's no need for this to go this way like so many things in our country. Um, at any rate, today on this live video, um, and I haven't figured out uh, how to take live, I'm, I'm streaming this simultaneously on YouTube and LinkedIn. I haven't figured out uh, how um, I can actually uh, look at comments while I'm doing this, but I think I think uh, you can you can post comments, uh, you know, and I can see them. And if I don't, I apologize. But what I'm going to do first is go through this notice of deficiency discussion. Okay, um, so let's check this out. So what I have on the screen here is an actual notice of deficiency um, that was received, and I've gone ahead and redacted all the relevant information about the employer. And I've highlighted some sections that I'm going to take you through um, in order to help you understand what we're actually looking at. And before I do that, I'm actually just going to go over here and put myself here so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay. Um, so I've highlighted things in this notice of deficiency to help you understand where to look, to help you, you know, see what, what the actual most important parts of this are. And to help you see that it's 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 much less scary than it appears to be on uh, on uh, what you call it uh, on first glance. Okay. Uh, and here's I see you, Michael. Uh, I can so Michael Mann is just somebody's just commenting on LinkedIn. I'm actually streaming from Streamyard, so I can see the comments on my Streamyard. Michael, thank you so much uh, for checking that out for me. Uh, so I it turns out I can see the comments if you're on YouTube and LinkedIn, and I'm happy to check them out. Okay, but let's go back to this notice of deficiency. And again, if you're in Group A, you're going to start getting these right now. Um, it's quite long. Is the first thing I'll is the first thing it makes it intimidating, right? This is an eight-page document with lots of text, but as you'll see, most of that text you can kind of ignore. All right. Um, so your name, your company's name, will be up here, and then what you have is essentially this first piece here tells you that you got to respond to this in 10 business days, okay? Business days doesn't count the weekends. It doesn't count federal holidays. 
and it starts the day after you receive the notice of deficiency. So if I received it today, which is a Thursday, my 10 day business day count is going to start tomorrow on a Friday. So the first thing you probably want to do is set up a calendar in um, whatever calendar you use and mark out 10 days from then. And you need to be have this in by the end of the 10th day at midnight um, East Coast time, which is kind of confusing. Okay. The employer, okay, so the next thing we want to go to is how do you actually respond to this? By far and away, the best way to do it, um, if you have a flag account, is to go into the flag system, okay? The flag system is where you more likely than not uploaded your prevailing wage and your 9142. Some people might still be doing it by paper. I haven't done it that way in years. And there's actually, when you go into your flag account, um, there is a button in the top right corner where you can upload your uh, notice of deficiency. And we'll look at that later in the video. I'll try to get that set up. I don't want to go log in live and then you guys will see some of the uh, information that you shouldn't see. But there are other ways you can do it. You can email it to tlc.chicago at dol.gov. And finally, and the method I just kind of caution against is you can mail it in to this address. I would never mail it in. Uh, you don't know if it's going to get there on time. You have to be in at the center, you know, within the 10 business days. And I really don't know what that's going to do in terms of, you know, getting your response quickly. Um, the other thing I've highlighted here is pick one method, right? So don't do multiple methods. So the thing that's going to happen if you upload to flag and you email, uh, both of those are going to be pings on your officer. And that officer is going to wait to resolve both pings. He's going to have to look at, he or she's going to have to look at both. And they're going to have to compare to see if the responses are the same. And they're kind of going to put your, you know, document more likely than not on the do in a little bit pile as they go through the easier submissions, right? So don't complicate things. Keep things down to, to one submission. Um, and again, you must submit within 10 business days. So again, your 10 business days start the day after you received notice of deficiency and you have so if today's thursday tomorrow's friday your second business day is monday right so next friday is six business days gets back on the on that next week it would be through thursday right that thursday in two weeks is when you would have to submit this except if there is a federal holiday like martin luther king's day in which case you do not count that day and you have one additional day okay so just something to keep in mind the next thing that this tells you, this first part, these first three pages, is that you're going to get a response. Um, what they don't tell you here is that you are, um, you're supposed to actually get a response back as well within 10 business days. That's also in the regulations. That's not stated here, but that's also part of the regulations. So um, once you submit, I would highly encourage you to follow up. And the way that you can follow up is by calling the support support line for the H2B program with the Department of Labor, okay? And you can look that up online. Um, but the support line with the Department of Labor um, can then put in a ping to your officer to make sure this gets done. Um, we've seen lots of these NODs get stuck in processing, right? Going past the 10-day mark, just uh, making it hard for employers to you know, meet the cap, even if they're in Group A. It happened to us plenty of times. Um, so you just need to stay on those officers. I wouldn't just submit and just kind of let it sit. I would I would make sure follow that 10-day deadline, you know, on day seven or eight, you know, follow up and be like, hey, what's up? We need a response by, you know, business day 10. And then the final thing here is what the CEO, the certifying officer can do after your response is they can either approve it, they can deny it, or they can send an additional NOD request. Um, and we'll talk about why that's important and why that really means you should try to present as complete of a response as possible, okay? And the final piece here is what you can do after you receive, uh, if, after you receive a denial. If you receive an acceptance, of course, you're going to go to the next step where you're gonna start recruiting and then look forward to full certification and hopefully getting your workers. But if you get a denial, it's not the end of the game, far from it. You can request administrative review and administrative review is a powerful tool Oftentimes, the certifying officers, they're not attorneys. Um, sometimes they're new. Some are very well you know, educated on the law. But in my experience, um, there can be a lot of advantage to you as an employer to go to administrative review in front of the OALJ, because there you're going to be dealing with an attorney. And 
um, the attorney is aware of the law. You know, specifically, we have to prove everything in these applications with a greater than 50% certainty, right? And so sometimes the officers are way too aggressive, right? Um, when we get these NODs, right? They don't understand that part. And the lawyer's a lot more amenable to getting that approval. We've gone on to the AL OALJ and gotten approvals plenty of times. So just know that that's also there in your toolkit. All right. So the reason I sp uh, chose this notice deficiency is it's ideal in that it shows us the four most common deficiency types that you're going to see on this. And um, I'm going to go through them and show you that not all deficiencies are created equal. So this notice of deficiency has four deficiencies. Um, and we're going to start with the one that's the hardest and work our way down towards easiest. Okay. So deficiency one is 20 CFR 655.6 A and B, also called failure to establish a job opportunity as temporary in nature. This is where your application really, uh, you know, wins or loses 90% of the time. And this is very common to get, particular for applications that are applying the first time, right? Um, if you're if you've gotten registered in the same category last year, you're asking for the same number of workers, you're not going to see this or you shouldn't see this. But if you're applying for the first time or you you have been denied in previous cycles, this is a question that's almost going to come up more often than not. More than 50% of first time filers get an on it on an NOD and it's always 655.6A. And the idea here is that they want to make sure you're meeting the regulatory standard and they write, there, there's a lot of things they say. So here they'll quote your argument and then they'll tell you why they don't think that argument makes sense. But, and you should read that, okay? But the main thing is actually this additional information requested, okay? So I'll tell you what is in here that you need to pay attention to and what's left out of here that you need to pay attention to. So what's in here that you need to pay attention to is all of the items, okay? The rule with Department of Labor, the rule with USCIS, Department of Homeland Security is give the officer what they want. When you give the officer what they want, you're taking, not only are you taking away one reason that they can deny your application. So often if there's a final decision of non-acceptance, they will quote back to you the things they requested and quote back to you the, and show you the things you didn't send in response to that request. If you respond to everything bit by bit, point by point, that at least is something that can be taken away. But the other bit here is that the often certifying officers trying to help you and they're saying, hey, this is what I need to make a decision. And so here it's quite helpful. Um, it's a dis They want a full statement of the employer's business history, even though we gave that here, um, a summary listing of all projects, a document that summarizes signed contracts and an explanation of inconsistencies submitted in the payroll. Okay, so the first three items um, I, I, would, I would lump into primary evidence, okay, items one through three. So they want more primary evidence um, of your claims, okay? Um, this is something that you should be in most cases able to get. Um, we'll talk about what what uh, why item five is uh, geared towards businesses that are new and might not be able to get those things. But you should do your very best to be very exact in responding to these items which ask for primary evidence. Okay, so that means if they say, give me a statement with the employer's business history, don't half-ass it, give them a full statement. Summarize all the, all the projects in the area of employment for the previous two calendar years. That includes start and end dates. So what you respond with should you know, be tailored to this request. And then finally, a document that summarizes the contracts. This, For example, in here, we should also have something that's tailored to this request. Item four which is an explanation of inconsistencies in the data. This is, uh, what this is referring to is the argument of the officer up here. And when you're responding to something says, please you know, tell us about these discrepancies, inconsistencies, what you should, a good, good tact is to actually excerpt what the officer wrote in that part and respond to each part, respond to each of the officer's arguments within that notice of deficiency, because there are several, there's several arguments here and you wanna excerpt each one and respond to them. Okay, and finally, there's this piece number five, which says, hey, if you can't get us that, get us something. That's essentially what it's asking for. 
Um, I want to caution you. If you can get the first three items, if you can get item four, don't just be lazy and default to five. I see that all the time. I see that all the time. You have to try your best to get the officer what they need, okay? And you just have to come to terms with the fact that sometimes it's going to take a little more time. It might take you those full 10 business days to respond. That being said, time is of the essence, so try to respond quickly. Okay. And then there's this little note, which is kind of like an offhand note, but I think it should be bold. It says, listen, if the submitted documents and its relationship to the employer's need is not clear to a lay person, so that's like a regular person, then the employer must submit an explanation of exactly how the document supports its requested dates of need. First of all, this is an ironic statement because nothing about the H2B process is uh, clear to a lay person. It's, it's legalese, it's bureaucratic ease, it's, it's, it's just really needlessly complicated. So there's an irony here. But what it is saying is don't send us a clump of papers and not tell us what it's about, right? So if you, if you just attach a bunch of official looking papers without giving a summary of what they are, it's just going to make the officer angry, frustrated. You don't want to go through that, okay? So um, that's just a note. Okay, so then we go to deficiency two, which is the second most common type of deficiency. It's saying, hey, tell us why you need, why you, tell us again why you need the number of workers that you do. This one is obnoxious um, in most applications. I, 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 I actually, if I could change one thing about this process, it's when you do provide initial evidence like contracts, like letters, things that you know state clearly why you need workers as we did in this application, that should be the end of it because it's a greater than 50% likelihood and anything that's turned in written to the you know, Department of Labor is a sworn statement. Um, so here, just do your best to explain what you've already turned in and then go down to additional information requested, okay? And here it's a much shorter list, okay? An explanation of supporting documentation, explanation of inconsistencies. And again, you're gonna go back to the officer's argument. You're gonna respond to it piece by piece and you're gonna you know, give them what they want and here they want a supporting documentation explanation, okay? And again, they have that same ironic note. If it's not clear to a layperson, please explain it. All right. All right. So those are the two hard ones. And then there's these two other ones, which I want you to put in a separate category, which is like failure to submit an acceptable job order. Okay. Here's the secret to this one. The top part is going to be, is going to tell you once what you didn't do, which is here. But if you want to skip all this and get past all of these numbered items, okay, go to it additional information requested and it will tell you exactly what they want next to this hashtag, okay? This is what you should really pay attention to because it's just restating the top. You can pretty much ignore items one through 17 unless you've never seen what needs to be in a job order before. Sometimes if you're, it's your first time, you'll have a long list of things here, but look at the hashtag, okay? And then look at what it says here. You just submit a job order with this um, top part amended. I'm pointing at the screen like you can see me pointing, which is silly. All right. And then the next one, this is another uh, item, which is 655.15a. So 655.15 uh, is going to deal with the ETA form. Similarly, it's going to tell you exactly what you need, do, need to do next to the hashtag. And here, pay attention to the bold italics. All right. Always pay, pay attention to bold italics which say you have to put a statement in your response saying we give permission uh, to the CMPC, to the DOL, right? To make this change on our behalf and just, just tell them what you want changed and you give permission and that should be it. So, you know, def deficiencies that deal with your ETA form 9142 and job order, you should be able to do those in like 10 minutes. Um, and so you can kind of like do those. I even address them in my notice of, of deficiency responses first, just to get them out of the way. I, Put in a new job order i fix the form and then most of your work is going to come down again if we go back up to um just to look at our our regulatory things and you can compare this to your notice of deficiency cfr 655 11 e3 and e4 okay and cfr 655.6 a and b um, the last thing i'll tell you here is keep a calm head um and you know do it. Right? Don't don't just wait around. You have 10 days, but keep a calm head and do it and you'll be, you know, hopefully just fine. And remember that responding to this is not the end. Um, 
because there's also the ability to appeal this, right? If something happens that that will probably affect your ability to get workers, the first 33,000 workers, but maybe getting a certification is worth it for you. It's certainly been like, that's been the case for our past employers. And then I would also say, make sure you complete as, you know, respond as fully as possible. Don't be lazy about this. Don't half-ass this. It's actually really important that you respond fully to, to what's being asked. So um, hopefully this video is helpful. And um, I hope that, uh, you know, you'll be back um, as I'll be trying to put these out as I, you know, kind of work through this H2B season with all of you. Have a great day. My name is Damien DeNoble. If you do need help with your notices of deficiency, we're happy to help. And you can get my information right here. All right. Um, and you can email us there at info at frontiertech.com. You can call that number and a receptionist can set up a call for you. And I'm happy to help with these notice of deficiencies throughout the season. Just try to get to me early, right? The later you get to me, the harder it is. All right. Thanks so much and have a great morning.